Now the next shape that we need to talk about is the kite. So let's call this A, B, C, and D. So the first thing you need to know is that A, B, and A, D are congruent. Next, you need to know that BC and DC are congruent as well. And then also, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So angle B and angle D are congruent to each other. Now let's focus on the diagonals. The two diagonals they meet at right angles. So they're perpendicular to each other. And also AC, it bisects angle A into two congruent angles. So these angles are congruent to each other. It also bisects angle C into two congruent angles. Now angle A and angle C are not congruent to each other in this example. In addition, AC, let's fix that, AC is the perpendicular bisector of BD. So that means that, let's call this point E first. So E is the midpoint of BD, which means BE is congruent to ED. So those are some basic properties of kites. And we'll call this D1 the length of diagonal 1, and this is d2. Like a rhombus, the area of a kite is 1 half d1 times d2. So this is just a basic introduction to kites. And so those are some properties that you want to be familiar with. Now let's work on some problems with kites. So let's say that angle A is 60 degrees and angle C is 100. What is the measure of angle B? So feel free to try this problem. Now if you recall, angle B is congruent to angle D. They're part of the short diagonal and so they're going to be uh, equal to each other. So therefore if we call angle B X, angle D has to be X. And a kite is basically a quadrilateral, a four-sided polygon. And the total interior angle of a four-sided polygon is 360. So we could say that 60 plus 100 plus x and x, which we can represent as 2x, they have to add up to 360. So 60 plus 100 is 160. And if we subtract both sides by 160, 360 minus 160 is 200. So therefore x is 200 divided by 2. So x is 100 degrees, which means angle B is 100 degrees. Now let's look at a second example. So let's call this A, B, C, and D. And let's draw the diagonals for this problem. We're going to call this E. So let's say that AE is equal to 6, and BE is 8, and EC is 15. Calculate the area of this kite and also the perimeter of the kite. So let's focus on the area. D1 is basically AC. It's 6 plus 15. So D1 is 21 units long. Now notice that E is the midpoint of BD. So AC bisects BD into two congruent parts, which means that BE and ED are the same. So if BE is 8, ED is 8, which means that the second diagonal is 8 plus 8, or 16 units long. So now we can calculate the area of the kite. So the area is 1 half d1 times d2. So d1 in this example is 21, d2 is 16. Now half of 16 is 8. So then we have 8 times 21. 
8 times 20, if you have 8 $20 bills, that's 160 bucks. And 8 times 1 is 8, so 8 times 21 is 168. So that's the area of this particular kite. Now let's focus on calculating the perimeter of the kite. So keep in mind the two diagonals they meet at right angles. So this is the 90 degree angle, which means there's four right triangles within this kite. So let's focus on this triangle, triangle BEC. So this side is 8, this is 15. What's the hypotenuse? Now there are some special triangles that you want to keep in mind. There's the 3, 4, 5 right triangle, the 5, 12, 13. There's the 7, 24, 25 triangle and the 8, 15, 17 triangle. So the hypotenuse is 17. And you can calculate it. Let's say if we call this h. If you did h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is uh, 225. And then 64 plus 225, that's 289. And the square root of 289 is 17. So bc is 17. Now we know that BC and DC are congruent, so DC is also 17. So now we got to find AB, which is congruent to AD. So notice that if we take these numbers and multiply it by 2, this will give us the 6, 8, 10 triangle. So if this is 6 and that's 8, the hypotenuse must be 10, which means this is 10. So the perimeter is the sum of all four sides. So it's 10 plus 10 plus 17 plus 17. 10 plus 10 is 20. 17 plus 17 is 34. So the perimeter of this figure is 54 units. Now let's work on another problem. So let's say if we have a kite that looks like this. And let's use the same letters to describe it. And this is going to be the short diagonal. And here we have the long diagonal. Now let's say that, well, let's call this E first. So let's say A, B, E. This angle is 35 degrees. And angle C, D, E is 25. Calculate every other angle in this figure. Now we know that the two diagonals meet at right angles. So this is 90, and everything else is 90 around it. And this is 90 as well. Now if this is 35 and this is 90, what's angle BAE? The three interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So BAE must be 180 minus 90 minus 35. 180 minus 90 is 90 and 90 minus 35. 90 minus 30 is 60, and 60 minus 5 is 55. So this angle is 55. Now these two angles are congruent, so therefore, this must be 25. And these two are congruent as well. So this is 35. Now, these angles as a whole are congruent, but they're not bisected into two congruent angles. The long diagonal bisects these angles into two congruent angles. Now, if this is 25 and this is 90, what's the missing angle here? So we know it has to be 180 minus 90 minus 25. So this is 90 minus 25. 90 minus 20 is 70, and 70 minus 5 is 65. So this is 65 and this is 65, which means this has to be 55 because these three have to add up to 180. So as you can see, these two angles, they're congruent. And these two angles are congruent as well. And these two angles as a whole are congruent. They're not bisected into two equal angles, but they both add up to 120. So they're congruent as a whole. And so that's it for the angles within a kite. Let's try one more problem.
So this is A, B, C, D, and E. So in this problem, B, E is equal to 4x plus 1. And E, D is equal to 6x minus 9. And let's say that A, E is equal to x squared plus 10x minus 3. So go ahead and determine the measure of AB. So that's the goal in the problem. Now E is the midpoint of BD. So that means that BE and ED is congruent. So we could set BE and ED equal to each other. So therefore 4x plus 1 is equal to 6x minus 9. So let's subtract both sides by 4x, and let's add 9 to both sides. So these will cancel. 1 plus 9 is 10. 6x minus 4x is 2x. And so if we divide both sides by 2, we can see that x is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So now that we have the value of x, we can calculate the length of segment AE. So AE is x squared plus 10x minus 3. And if we replace x with 5, we're going to have 5 squared plus 10 times 5 minus 3. So 5 times 5 is 25, 10 times 5 is 50, and 25 plus 50 is 75, and 75 minus 3 is 72. So AE is 72. In order to find AB, we need to find the value of BE. And so we know that BE is 4x plus 1. So that's going to be 4 times 5 plus 1. So 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1. That's 21. So now let's calculate the hypotenuse of that triangle. Since we know this is a right angle. So let's call this c. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And so a is 72, b is 21. 72 squared is 5,184. 21 squared is 441. And so that's equal to c squared. So 5,184 plus 441 that's 56.25. Now, let's take the square root of both sides. So the hypotenuse, which is the measure of AB, that's equal to 75. And so that's the answer.